In a social sense, there are probably some positive sides to our collective fears. New strains of flu virus, for example, push us to find new cures. Fear can also help to build social cohesion. People tend to pull together when they feel threatened. After 9-11, the French president, Jacques Chirac, famously declared, today, we are all Americans. Most of these benefits are short-lived, and some even have a dangerous flip side. Fear of sickness can become a contributor to more sickness. And pulling together inside our group can bring us to the point where we become suspicious of those who don't belong, where the world becomes a place of us versus them. That's the root of every form of xenophobia. Aristotle once said, no one loves the man whom he fears. Most of us will never live to see the kind of worst case scenarios we hear so much about, yet some of us still live against the backdrop of persistent unspoken fear. Living with fear means living with tension, it wears us down. Persistent fear causes our adrenal gland to push out more than the usual levels of certain chemicals that wear down our nervous and immune systems. So we end up becoming sick more quickly, both physically and mentally. Persistent fear reduces our self-esteem and leaves us with a paralyzing sense of impotence and fatalism. It kills our confidence. We stop trying new things, we stick to predictable paths instead, and when we stop experimenting, we stop growing. London and, uh, college and something that you live with.